Welcome back. Yes, the show is still political spectrum reaching you live from the very and of course, it will interest you to know that we are live on our different social media platforms on Facebook and of course on YouTube. So use the well, to use the handle at Spectrum TV that NGN joined the conversation. On this second part after the updates, we'll be taking a look at uh, the People's Democratic Party presidential aspirants, our very own, the governor of Aquibum State, Governor Dom Emanuel, who has decided to throw himself into uh, the presidential race or perhaps accept the offer of uh, Brigitte family who actually purchased the form for him and asked him or pleaded with him or perhaps begged him to join the presidential race of which he has obliged. So far, consultations are in high speed. He has consulted widely uh, both ex-presidents uh, and uh, other stakeholders within the People's Democratic Party for their consent. What are his chances? Now, a lot of persons had different feelings or different reactions to this same issue. And as you talk about reactions, uh, we have been joined or we will be speaking with uh, a political affairs analyst who would take a turn to, you know, evaluate the opportunities or the chances uh, of the governor of Aquibum State on clinching to the People's Democratic Party ticket to run for the presidency in 2023. Good morning, Mr. Anamo. Good morning, Otto. Okay. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Okay, we're doing fine over here. I guess you're doing fine as well. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Okay, um, let's get started on this issue. It is not news, and I'm sure you are aware that the governor of Aquibum State is contesting for uh, the number one seat, as it is now. He has accepted uh, the plea of Brokete Family, the human rights uh, radio station in Abuja, who actually purchased the form for him and asked him to join the contest. Uh, this was in view of his many achievements in Aquibum State in the areas of uh, industrialization, which, of course, the aviation industry would always be top on that list and uh, several other developments that he has been able to achieve during this administration and they want him to bring to bear what he has been able to do in a quiet state and replicate that perhaps in a bigger capacity in Nigeria. What's your reaction to that? Well, in a, let, me, let me begin this way. In the first place, the governor is qualified to run for to vie for the presidency as an individual. He has the reputed academic uh, qualification, experience, and experience on the job to run. So the, the just that the angle for the purchase of the form, as you put there, is a, is a little more, uh, I have my reservation on that, even though I wouldn't want it probably because uh, is that is that reservation about, close to what? Uh, uh, let, let me come in there. Is that reservation close to what former President Lucio Guna Basin just said that uh, uh, people shouldn't vote for candidates that groups have come together to buy them forms? Yeah, I have come to believe that uh, you know, our politicians have developed the tactics mm. of sending people to buy forms on their behalf and calling that because if you have. Uh, if a form was purchased for the governor, it should come from a government who are on ground and who are on ground to see what he's done and what he has not uh, done. On the issue of uh, industrialization, as a quiet person, I have that sentiment. I have, I, have, I have that love that I want a quiet person to be there. But if I want to zero down on what you call industrialization, I, I, I would think I would score him probably very high on that. Sentimentally, I give not to to that, but in terms of performance, I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't wish the acquired situation uh, to be so repl replicated in Nigeria as you put it. Mm. So, because uh, if you are talking about industry, also let's talk about it. If you are talking about industry, <laughs> huh? okay. we we mentioned this industry. Where are these industries in the first place? If you talk about uh, the peacock print, how many prints are you seeing in the market with a peacock inscription? If you are talking about the toothpick industry, how many industries, how many toothpicks are you seeing label acquiring? Then if you are talking about, um, if you are talking about, um, I don't know, many of those things in the, the pencils, I don't see those things in the market. So the issue of discussing the collection does not arise. What I expect the performer in acquiring state or anybody to do 
if you look at the area where you have comparative advantage in agriculture, and acquire why we should naturally grow cassava. We look up to those things. I probably should naturally grow yam. We look up to those things. Acquire them as an oil bearing community to naturally have, uh, should naturally run um, one of these oil industries or probably uh, refinery and all those things federal government are not doing. It's only those are the things we wish to be replicated in Nigeria. So, well, how, how about the aviation body, industry? Because at the time, Nigeria is not cannot make boast of one Nigerian airways that is flying at the moment. Aquarium State has several airbuses that uh, is rated as one of the best as far as Nigerian aviation industry is concerned. Aviation? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to talk about what the, who, who are the owners of aviation. How much was budgeted for the aviation? How much of that is being achieved? What is Aquarium budget for the aviation industry? industry? Who, uh, we have other parastatals uh, managed by boards. Which board in Aquaibo State is managing? The aviation is not even under Ministry of uh, uh, Transport. There is no parastatal under Ministry of Transport taking care of the aviation. So all these hawks was I, I don't, I don't think. It. All right, sir. Um, I don't think Nigeria like that. All right, let, let, let's move. A, a lot of Nigerians would disagree with you on, on, on grounds that the present administration of Governor Odomi Manjal has not done enough to be seen fit or to, to, to have him being seen as fit and credible enough to run the Nigerian government. Now, um, in as much as you have said that it is the people within a Kwaibum state who have seen firsthand what uh, uh, Governor Odomi Manjal has been able to do, who should be able to raise funds to buy uh, the forms for him? The question Nigerians would also ask is, how many persons within the Aquaibom State community can boast of significant amount of money to be able to raise that level of funds to purchase the forms? Yeah, well, why, 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 why is that? that? That is another question that I should, I should equally turn around to ask you. Why is the state so rich and the people so poor? If you, if you, if you naturally, by what we have produced, by the standard, by the kind of wealth we boast of, we shouldn't have a state so rich with people so poor. Those are not the same people one. Okay? Because if you're talking about it, it's even embarrassing that some people will come to say, say it's the human rights radio going to uh, pursue, pursue from. Where is the radio raising its own money for? How much can a spectrum TV and a planet raise to buy a presidential form for somebody? Why is it that is that one that is so power is so empowered to buy form for people? Well, um, in, in the defense, you wouldn't want to rate um, Spectrum with bracket um, uh, radio as it stands because, you know, the, 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 we are operating in We are not a human rights. We are not a human, human rights right, uh, organization. organization yeah. So we wouldn't want that comparison right no, now. Then I expect, you to make, I expect you to make more money if you, if you are not a human rights. It, it's it's not about money. money. It's about your human business. rights now. It's, it's not about money. We might what have the money, right but that is not part of our jurisdiction. It is not part of what uh, Spectrum or tough media is about to get forms for aspirants. Uh, perhaps it's one of the many aspects of the human rights radio break it, to do that. It, it, it's okay. It's okay. Like well, I've told you, I agree with uh, you know, uh, Governor Odom Emmanuel is very much qualified to run <laughs> for the president. He should buy, but uh, let is, that, is that sarcastic? That let that not be a distraction to governance in Aquaibo because we suffer the same thing. And mm. I had a very good plan for the people. At the time, he had wished to, to transit peacefully. He went, he ran for the uh, presidency, and the state became something else, and which was why he even lost his president, his uh, preferred candidate in that particular reason. One of the reasons he lost his pre he lost the election, he, he couldn't, he couldn't, he, uh, he couldn't place his preferred, listen, because of that, the uh, preferred candidate, because of the distraction he suffered then. So I just wish he doesn't suffer the same thing. All right, sir. Uh, at this point in time, lots of Nigerians would agree that presently in Nigeria, Kwaibum happens to be one of the most peaceful and secure state. And we've had comments from the presidency, from the Nigerian police force and other security agencies confirming that standpoint. And um, one of the statements that um, Governor Domi Manuel made when the Brigade Family Radio Show came to, you know, seek his consent and gave him the form to run for the office of the presidency was predicated on that standpoint that Nigeria needs a leader who will not only be able to, you know, settle the problem of the economy, but also be able to maintain peace in Nigeria. Um, would you say that uh, that statement has been correct? And to what point? The, 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 the
is not suffering insecurity, like Nigeria has been suffering insecurity. But the pocket of, let's be very realistic, the pocket of crisis we have had in this state have been some, some misled call people sponsored by politicians who begin to mess, mess around. Uh, they call it a call to war, and you have few of those things, boys stabbing themselves and running around. So the, what we had in um, Okanafon, we know was the uh, outcome of some uh, political wars. And all so those things are things that could easily be, uh, be, be resolved. So I cannot, there is nothing uh, to measure up as a parameter in our five room. Uh, uh, to link up with the Nigerian situation, like uh, issues of Boroboka and Ambanit and all that. Akwaibo is naturally a very peaceful society. Otherwise, some of the things we have endured as a people, we will not endure it. Akwa, Akwa, an average Akwaibo man is naturally peaceful. We have always had a very peaceful environment. If not, the only people who have caused some of the crisis we get in Akwaibo state are politicians who use their supporters, who who later migrate into, I don't know if you are aware of this language, what they call the five families, which refer to the most, uh, the major cult. It's an open secret in a quiet boom state. So when you find crisis among those who pockets of, um, we have had, let me tell you, if I want to measure this, there was a fight in Okobo local government between um, Amamon and Okobodi people. To, during that fight, the governor himself is set up to commission a coconut uh, a coconut plant, a coconut farm in that particular place, without calling those warring communities. It did not even come through the back road. It came through the airport, the airport side of the, behind the airport, to AKA where it commissioned that thing. And the people who ran away from that place, the problem is still ongoing there. So how was the response to the even or crisis? I don't want to bring that so that it doesn't look as if I'm against the governor, but the truth is this. There have not been any major security crisis to say the governor has done so well in the area of security. Are you talking about those Volvos that were brought fully that are down there in every um, in, a, in, a, in every mechanic workshop? So what 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 security impact has it made in Akwaibu? Akwaibu is naturally peaceful. We've not been in any crisis. We've not been in any COVID, uh, security crisis. So can you use that as a, a parameter to governing Nigeria? Okay, now, uh, let's take it away from Akwaibom because we've been able to establish uh, some of his uh, and, uh, strong points as far as leadership in Akwaibom is concerned, uh, major achievements in aviation, major uh, achievements in uh, roadmap, and uh, the security of uh, Akwaibom state and the peaceful nature of the state. Uh, well, looking at this contest, uh, it's not him alone in, in the PDP that is aspiring for the position of the presidency. You have the likes of uh, the governor of River State, Governor Yusuf uh, Wiki there. We have the likes of uh, uh, Amich, uh, the likes of uh, uh, who again, there's some top uh, individuals, uh, the likes of Saraki and uh, the rest of them who have thrown themselves into, into the race as it is now. What are his chances considering the calibers of persons within the People's Democratic Party that is still vying well, for within, this office? Within the People's Democratic Party, the battle for the soul of the party is between yes and wiki and they, because if you look at the structure of that party the build up to that uh, party you will see that the entire fight being fought right now is going to be a square up fight between wiki and atiku abubakar what i'm saying so is this. the the prior structure of the party the former people who were in the party the most of the, uh, some of them in the House of Assembly that were deposed were basically Atiku uh, loyalists. Mm -hmm. And if you check now, people like Sekondu, who is different from Wiki Police, who was deposed last time, is working in every consultation done by Atiku Abubakar. You find who you find him there. So very interesting scenario. Then the both members of the current uh, National Working Committee of the party are, are in uh, Wiki's uh, camp. So. What I see now is that even if by today, without fear or without fear of favor, if you place election between, if you start from the south south, if you place the candidate of the south south together, Wiki will emerge as the winner because he is taking time to build the structure of that party. And right now, the structure of that party, as it were, is in his pocket. So the rest, to me, instead of being pretenders in the race. In, the, in this race, we have serious-minded people. We have the pretenders. 
I don't want to list the pretenders, and I will stop. I just quickly have mentioned as a very serious contender. To me, uh, the rest aren't putting much into it. On the side of the All Progressive Congress, I know, I, for now, I don't take those guys serious until Buari make pronouncements. The day Buari will make pronouncements, like I said this morning, you will find how you will find them still think towards that because they are used to playing that kind of politics. We are Ogamos side, and that is the pain of the Nigerian politics. All right. Now, you've said that um, presently that uh, irrespective of the fact that you have agreed that Governor Domi Manuel is qualified to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and um, placing him at par with other contemporaries in the political ambition that he is vying for, talking about the presidency, you've also said, as your opinion, that uh, you don't see him winning against the like of Nyesop Wike. But a lot of Nigerians at this point, apart from persons within the Akwaibom state, who have also testified that the governor has the capability, based on um, the, the consultation so far done, we've seen persons within the Northern Cabal to welcome uh, Governor Domi Manuel. We've seen persons from uh, the South uh, Cabal also welcoming him. And we know that regardless of this uh, agreed disagreement or the, the fact that uh, Governor Domi Manuel and Yesom Wike have both declared intention for the same office, that both of them are of the PDP um, South South Governors Forum, who have consistently, you know, declared that they want some, uh, what they call the southern interest to be protected. Now, do you see a situation playing out where one or two, or one of these persons will have to cave in for the other to fly, fly the party's flag? That is that is what they could do to win this election. That is what that is what I mean. At this point here, we should be looking for a presidency from the south. There shouldn't be issue or pretense or people pretending to contest election or trying to contest election to to negotiate to give them ground to negotiate. The South we expect all the southern governors to come together and decide on this. Check who has who is much more stronger in the room and I ask the rest to put behind him. What I'm saying so is this if you place that election from the sentiment we have seen so far, the the e might want to vote for Peter Obi because I have seen from from the waves so far, from the political waves so far if you find that the Igbo are, are tilting towards Peter Obi, that is a clear, that's, a, that's, a, that's why you see the likes of um, um, Oju Sokalu tactically withdrawing from that race now. Now, if you go the, in the South South here, I know the sentiment of the Bayer South people. I know how the Bayer South people behave. I also know the strength of Wiki in Cross River. So Wiki will have a very serious advantage in Cross River. He will have a very political because he has a like of we I don't want to mention him of picnic supporting him there, but he has a very strong hold in Cross River. He's enjoying a very he's enjoying that same way in Bayelsa State. He's enjoying that same way in uh, uh, rivers. He's enjoying that same way even in Benue, in Benue State. So because now there seems to be a sort of alliance between the, the rivers people and the middle bell, the middle bell class. So that alliance is so strong and it gives me a, a very strong advantage. So that is what, that is my evaluation. Now, if you look at our governor, well, the way our people vote here, we will have a diaphragm delegate. You might have a split of the the rivers, the, sorry, the cross river, maybe uh, around the epic area. Uh, but, but behind that, I don't see, I don't see strength because even uh, the, the people I see with, with him there, I, I let me not mention them. I don't see strength in it. Is DG has been a long time military governor who had not been in politics for a very, a very long time. He has not been so strong in the People's Democratic uh, Party politics for a very long time. So I don't see where to derive the strength from. I don't see where to take the measurements from. My advice would be that the people in the South South, are people in the South South, and the South issue come together and present a common front. Because whatever happened, I, I, I am sure that my thing, if my thinking is right, that the Northerners may just end up queuing behind Atiku Abubakar. So we must be very tactical. Because like I've always said, the People's Democratic Party by all standards, oh, the people of the South, this ticket. And most importantly, to be, to be, if there was any level of morality in politics, I think they owe the people of South this ticket. I am saying that irrespective of where I come from, the Igbos have come along with it. They've suffered enough. 
the FW is not good. So naturally, we should also give them that support. We talk about statement today. If we are asking the likes of uh, uh, Jonathan to play statement, what do we ask the likes of Atiku to do? What should we ask people like that to do? Well, a, a, a lot of persons have, uh, uh, have attributed the weakest entrance into the presidential race as being a way to stop Alaji Atiku Abubakar from contesting or to back out from the contest, which of course has been abortive. That effort is not uh, really, you know, working out for Governor Yesu Wiki as far as the 2023 presidential race is concerned. And then keep with that in view and looking at another angle that uh, a former Governor Peter Obi was the running mate of uh, former uh, Vice President Atiku Abubakar, in the 2015 general elections, they came together to pair uh, when uh, President Mohamed Bari was the candidate of the All Progressives Congress. And now a lot of persons are of the viewpoint that Eva Laji Atiku Abubakar must climb down from the presidential race under the People's Democratic Party, that he will be throwing his support on the aspiration of uh, former governor Peter Obi, which is one angle to that story. And of course, we have also seen the likes of uh, 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 Bukola Saraki, who emerged as the, the four-man consensus uh, candidate uh, organized, though it's not, uh, any, it's not of, uh, would I say, it's still very controversial. Uh, there was uh, another angle that he might be pairing with governor, governor Dom Emmanuel. <coughs> Most, not just. Uh, what do you make of that? Not just, not just um, Wiki. Most of the governors going into the, going for the ticket of the People's Democratic Party are doing that as a challenge to the moon. But then they shouldn't do that individually. If they present the common front as governors, come to be that because the governors are the ones controlling the political parties. Like it stands now, the governors are the ones sponsoring the People's Democratic Party. So what is required of them is for them to lead their individual ambition, come together and pick a candidate from the South. Probably, like I always say, in my own sentiment, somebody from the Southeast and begin to support the person. It will give more strength to the, to the agitation than having all of them contesting for that same position. Because if they are come to say, okay, yes, so we can let me come. Let me even forget my personal ambition. Since I don't know, the governor should be able to end there as okay. Let it not look as if I am the one who won this. Let it not be as if I am pursuing um, a selfish ambition. Let us come together and bring a new person, a younger person, uh, among our political population uh, or among our elite and front the person. So if the governors come that way, it, it, will be, it will be easy for them to amass support from the, from the people. But when they are the one asking for power to be drawn to the South, and they are the same one asking for them to be elected, it, 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 it sparks of suspicion because an average person will begin to think that the agitation was just for, for their political interests. All right, sir. Now, um, we, a basic focus has been with the, the standpoint and um, the chances for uh, uh, Governor Dobby Manjol's, uh, you know, winning at the polls and his chance of getting the ticket first and foremost before winning at the polls. Now, we've established a lot of grounds that first he's credible and all of the other issues that we've taken into consideration. But I want us to move away from politically, uh, from, from the political standpoint and what he has achieved since he came into uh, politics as the governor of a Kwaibom state to his existence in the boardroom as a boardroom guru, as a boardroom chairman. Because during the show, uh, when the Brekete family actually presented that ticket to him, they also made uh, uh, mention of his antecedents and his achievements within the banking sector. Would you think that would play out significantly to his advantage at this point? Well, what will happen is that if the advantage is there that as a major banker, he's exposed to a lot of politicians, he's exposed to a lot of people, he has come to know a lot of people as a senior banker. So, aside that, if you want to tell me what he has achieved individually, I, uh, Mr. Udom Emmanuel was literally unknown before 2015, before I probably threw him up into the race. So, I wouldn't I have not seen his uh, uh, political model. So it is about now that he is trying to build that uh, 
uh, political models and also circulate the space with his own political power. So I don't see any advantage. Uh, he does not enjoy any advantage uh, to leverage on as a banker and a bottom player. The, the only bottom advantage he has is his exposure to a lot of people uh, having that connection, which is why you see him enjoy that uh, connection across the, the, the country. But the question is, is are these connections with fellow boardroom members or does this connection cut across a, a political party or political uh, class? And do they, does, it, do, do this, does it also cut across a political class with weight? So those are the things we, we ask. And if you ask me the composition, you look at those that make up his, um, his, uh, his team, his campaign team, uh, the likes of Gabriel Kuzma, uh, the other one is very old. He's long. He's, uh, his last appearance in politics is about 30 years ago. Then, so is that is the composition that will tell you his strength. So within that, his campaign organization and unit, I don't see him enjoying that uh, super doctor with uh, super political uh, influencers. Oh, well, uh, it, uh, th th that seems to be your standpoint on that. But I would like to quickly consider this is a drift. I know you said it, it happened in, uh, in, uh, when Governor Victor Ta actually was vying for uh, the position of the president and uh, when he had business to set in an aquarium state as regards to his successor. Uh, where do you see this ambition taking the president? That's in your last thought. It's this ambition, like where do you see it taking the governor of aquarium state? Well, I think uh, it is going to affect government. Mm. It is going to affect governor because you can see that uh, any time he's consulting, you will find a lot of people, commissioners uh, around him. So at that point, you don't expect those ministries to be very functional because, you know, the Nigeria, unlike other places, we don't enjoy that strong institution. We look at our strong people. We look up to to leaders. Otherwise, whether a governor is there or the governor is not there, uh, the institutions of government should run perfectly. Mm -hmm. So for me, in the meantime, I quite want people to brace up to have an absentee governance or governor. Well, if that's your last thought, uh, well, it would be very un, uh, unusual to have that as a, lost, uh, as a last thought to base up because we believe perhaps the governor has set up mechanisms and proper structure in place to see through that governance doesn't suffer while he pushes uh, his ambition to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We'll wait, we'll wait to see. Oh, well, uh, many thanks for joining us on the show. It was nice having you again. Thank you very much. All right. Go ahead and have a nice day. God bless. And yes, well, we were talking with Comrade Victor and Namo on the possibilities uh, and looking at the chances that His Excellency Governor Dom Emmanuel might possibly have at the presidential rest under the Umbrella Party. And uh, yes, he shed quite a light, leaving us with a very unusual you know, closure. Well, he's entitled to his opinion, uh, mm. as a, a lot of persons are as well. He's a Nigerian, and of course, regardless of the situation of things, he still has to bear his mind. But he has been able to raise a um, very salient point as well as to why his standpoint is, is not in favor of, of, of Governor Udomi Manjot. In as much as a lot of persons will argue with him, at this point in time, we just have to, you know, wait on chances, wait on development and, and scenarios as they play out in the political terrain to actually get to know what would happen. Of course, we'll wait and see. That is in few months to come, in few weeks to come, all this would come to a rest and we'll see several, one individual emerge per political party as a flag bearer for each position across board.